Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to a brand new series of Coding Game. Now, some of you following my channel may say, hey, you've done this before, and I'll explain that in a little bit. For, but for those of you who don't know me, I am Master Hellish. I do lots of videos and live streams and produce all sorts of content, usually around trains, transport, rockets and space, with a few other things like Minecraft thrown in. But today we're doing Coding Game with some coding. Now, if you don't know what Coding Game is, it's an online app slash platform where you can practice your coding skills and it's also got a little bit of a kind of LinkedIn aspect about it around finding jobs and things, but we're not interested in that. We're just interested in the coding part and the practice uh, trials and, and challenges that it produces and shows. So here you can see on the screen we've got our first challenge in front of us. So what are we going to be doing this series? Well, yes, I said I've done this before, but this time it's a little bit different. In the past, we've done a couple of different languages, and recently I've decided I'm going to learn Python. So we're going to change the language to Python. There we go. Now, this is going to be interesting because I don't really know Python. I have spent probably a grand total of about a day's worth of time getting to grips with some of the basics and now I want to know more. So I'm going to have to do a lot of googling for syntax but I'm hoping that my past experience with languages will serve me well. Now for those of you who don't know on the left hand side we have the actual simulation that we have to code something for and on the bottom left we've got the goal. It gives us what we have to do and it tells us our inputs and outputs. On the right hand side is our code. So, first things first, let's have a look at this. This is the first practice um, challenge. It's called onboarding. And uh, we can see here that we've got a drone and enemies are coming in and we have to try and kill them. And it says, the goal, your program must destroy the enemy ships by shooting the closest enemy on each turn. The rules. On the start of the turn, within the game loop, your uh, you obtain the information of the two closest enemies. Okay, so we get uh, enemy one and distance, and the name, uh, which is the name and the distance to enemy one, and enemy two, the name and distance of the uh, to enemy two. So we get the enemy two and distance two. Before your turn is over and the end of the loop, output the value of either enemy one or enemy two to shoot the closest enemy. So there could be multiple enemies on the screen, but we're only given the closest two, and we have to decide which one we're going to have. So here we go. This is the game loop that we're given. So this is the part of the code that we're doing. And you can see there's some comments and stuff to help us out here. And it says game loop while wow, true. Fantastic. You can see here that we've got um, some uh, bits of code here. We've got uh, a variable, enemy one, distance one. So that we've got them. And we've got some input here that it looks like it's getting some input from the system and populating those variables. So then we have to write something that allows us to choose which one we need and then we have to print the name of the enemy. Okay, now I know how I would do this in other programming languages. I would do something like if um, the distance one, so this variable, is less than the distance to then uh, we would put in we would say well we want the, the the lower of the two distance one and then I would probably say something like else distance two something like that now that is not the correct syntax for Python the syntax. so what we're gonna do is uh, because I haven't really done that before, I'm going to look it up. So I've got a se second screen here. And this is one of the ways that I learn syntax when I'm doing things. And after you've done a couple of if statements, you usually remember it. So I'm just Googling Python if statement, clicking probably one of the top results. And that takes me to W3Schools. By the way, W3Schools, a fantastic resource. And it gives you, it tells you some conditions and gives you some examples. And then I think it's going to give us, yeah, it's, a, it's given us an uh, elif. 
uh, is a keyword for Py uh, Python's way of saying if the previous conditions were not true. Okay, so we've got else and we've got some other bits as well. Now, instead of saying then in Python, according to the information here, we put um, a colon. Speaking if this, and then the colon is kind of like this block of code here, this stuff. You can see we've got a similar syntax up here. It says while true, and then we've got the colon, and it does all of this whilst while true. Now, while true is just a way of getting applications to loop infinitely. And if you were building some sort of product or proper application, you would probably never do that. There may be some rare scenarios where you might, but you'd normally be checking for something and dropping out the loot loop within those checks. Now, here we've got some sort of else. Now, we don't want an else like that because that's not how we do it. Now, it might just be that it is a little bit different. Ah, oh, yes, it is. So in Python, we go with a lowercase else and then put in our semicolon. Now, here, we're actually saying distance one, distance two. We have just said that we haven't actually done anything here. This is just some random stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize a new variable. And I'm going to call it enemy... What do we want? We want the closest. So I'm going to call it enemy closest. Um, now, we have to... I, I don't know if we have to declare that, so let's have a see. Let's just initialize it as nothing like a, a blank there we go so we've we've given it a value of a zero length string and then what we do is if distance one is less than distance two we'll set enemy closest to enemy one and then if the uh, distance of distance two is hang on a minute have I got this the right one so We'll see if we get this right the way around in a minute. I usually get these operators for less than or equal to and getting the variables right either side can be a little bit logically tricky if you're not used to it. So if distance one is less than distance two, that's the way I'm reading that, then we want enemy one, yes. And basically, if the opposite is true, we want enemy two. Then instead of giving the, instead of printing, which is the way of outputting in this scenario, the name of the enemies. That's the actual um, characters, name of the enemy. We don't want to do that. We want to give it whatever is stored in the enemy closest variable. And you see if we hover over it there, it tells us it's a variable, tells it's his name, and it tells us the type of that variable. It's a type string. Now if we hover over distance, you can see that it's given as the variable name and it tells us it's an int, it's an integer, so it's a number, it's a whole number, not a part. You can't have fractions or decimals in an in integer. At least, not in most programming languages. I don't think in any programming language, not that I know of anyway. But I think, in theory, we have actually already completed this. So let's test the scenario. So we down here in the bottom um, corner, we've got the test cases. So it's called imminent danger of this onboarding. So if I click play test case, this scenario will run and we'll see what will happen. The first thing it will do is tell us if we've got any errors, but as long as we haven't, it'll run the scenario. I don't think we've got any errors, so let's have a look. Okay, what's going on here? So the scenario is going on, it's shooting, seems to be okay, it's shooting the closest ones, and we win! Fantastic, congratulations, we've done it. And in the bottom left hand corner uh, here, you can see that we've got some output as well. So you can see uh, we've got the game information, action output stream, and some debug errors as well. And you can see here that we can actually scroll through what happened and you can see what happened and read what happens. This is a really good way of understanding what's going on so you can learn it well. But also, if there's any problems, um, then you can get it sorted. You can see we've got 15 threats approaching fast, and it gives us uh, threats within range. And there's, I think there's just uh, that there, and it says uh, it's, we're going through time. Which way round is it? Yeah, okay, so there is going through. So it looks like it's given us names here. Look, look. So this is the name I think that we generated here. So it says um, rock has been targeted, threats within range, hot droid seventy. So we output 
Heart Droid. Then the game information says Threats Within Range, Hard Hat and Bolt, and we output Bolt. Then we uh, it says Threats Within Range, we've got this Sectoid and Hard Hat, and we've got the distances here. You can see that um, Sectoid is at 56, which is 4 meters closer, and we output Sectoid. So we've done it correctly and it works. Now, if I'd have got these the wrong way round, okay, if I'd have said enemy two and enemy one, what would have happened? Just for the fun of it, let's do that. So it's it's valid code and you can see here that it's deliberately shooting the one that's furthest away each time and it says failure, you were destroyed. So let's just put that back. Now, what I and one thing I should have said at the very beginning of this, this is not a tutorial series, okay? This is not a how you play this series. This is not any sort of learning series, except for the fact it's my learning. And I'm bringing you along with the journey, okay? So I'm explaining my thought processes. I'm explaining what I'm doing. It doesn't mean it's best practice, and it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. So if you're learning, you need to make sure that you are looking at resources that you know are reliable uh, but feel free to come along with this journey and listen to my thoughts um, it should be uh, good fun so we're just going to run that again and we can see that after i've switched that back and corrected it we have successfully completed that level well there we go folks uh, we've done the first one and i'm pretty sure that we'll be all right to carry on for now so far, I've learned a few different things. I, I've learned that the uh, we definitely need to be careful where, where we put uh, these colons, and they're actually needed for these blocks. And I've learned the syntax for an if statement. Hopefully, I'll remember that for the future. And also, I believe the spacing is important. There we are. Oh, there we go. Look. So we, we've noted that, that in Python, the indentation, not spacing, sorry, the indentation is important. You see, we've got some uh, little squiggly red lines there that is telling us that this there's something not right here. Um, so I'm going to tab that back in and everything's cool. Right then, let's submit that. There we go. And we get a little score come up and we get 100% and some achievement unlocks. Fantastic. And then we're going to move on to the next one next time. Hope you've enjoyed this little adventure into Python with me. I will see you in the next one. Remember, there is a link to the playlist in the video description. And leave all your thoughts, ideas, and questions down in the comment section. I will see you soon. But for now, from me, 